Hello, my name is Dan Johnson. I'm a technical sound designer here at Somatone. Uh, in this first video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up FMOD with GVR. I will be adding ambisonic audio, as well as other ambient events for torches, frogs, and water, as well as other mono point sources for the audio for the guns and gun impacts. We will also add the sound of a bird which flies around you in the level. Let's check it out. So what I have set up already is just some basic events. Uh, they're all 2D events because we're going to be adding the GVR source. But you can also create a 3D event and just delete the 3D panner. So uh, first thing we're going to do after we set up all our events, I'm going to hit Control 2 to go to the mixing desk and then go onto my master bus. And then pre-fader, I'm going to add effect, plugin effects, Google listener. And I'm also going to change my output to stereo. The GVR plugins send information from the source and sound field to the listener, which bypasses the internal routing in FMOD. So we need to make sure we have a listener so that we can actually hear what is going on in the GVR plugins. And we set it to stereo because VR sound is best heard in headphones, which are stereo outputs. In our first event, we're going to go and create a sound field event. So I'm going to add a plugin effect Google sound field and then import my ambisonic file. This is a four channel ambisonic file. Alt scroll wheel to zoom out. And I'm gonna add a loop. And this has a really bad fade in the beginning, which is why I am not doing the entire thing. Uh, so we can just preview that. And in our 3D panner over here, or 3D preview over here, we can use the scroll wheel to preview the rotation. Uh, if you note, you cannot use distance attenuation with the sound field. It only re responds to rotation. And then double click to put it back in the center. In our next event, the water event, we actually, in all of our in our, all of our events, we are going to add an effect, plugin effect, Google source. So everything except the sound field is going to be a source. And we're going to set that to this fall off curve and set the min to something very small and the max to about 100. In our water event, I'm just going to import my sounds. And I'm going to set this one to asynchronous, set it to the same length, and loop it. So in our water event, we want the spread. We're going to turn the spread up so it doesn't sound like it's coming from a single point source. I'm going to set it pretty high so that it sounds uh, less point sourcey and more of an area sound. that down a little bit. Another thing that the Google VR source can do is occlude the sound. So if we play this water event, and turn up the occlusion, we can hear that it's pretty severe. Um, I generally don't turn it up above two. You can use this occlusion factor to simulate this event being played behind a building or on the other side of a big cliff or something. And our next event, the torch, I'm just going to do pretty much the same thing. Go into my assets and import it as a multi-sound and loop it. This one we do want to have a small spread because it is a point source. And the frog, we are going to import our frogs. I'm just going to do one, loop it, but I'm going to turn on randomized triggering, so down to about 75%, and then in my other frog event, I will do the same thing, but turn down to 
about 60%. The crane wheel is going to be different on the distance attenuation. I'm going to turn it up to a couple meters. It's a fairly large object. And I am going to turn the spread up a little bit on that. And our last ambience event is our bird. Import my bird sounds as a multi and loop them. The bird is going to be flying around our head, so we want it to have sounds pretty much constantly. So those are it for our ambiences. I'm going to go into my gunfire event, add my sounds there, and my gunfire without any reverb on it. Uh, you want the reverb to be processed by the game engine. And you'll hear that since we haven't set up our source yet, I don't hear anything. But on my ambience events, we do. And it's just because we haven't set up the source. So, add effect, plugin effects, Google, source. For this one, I'm going to use a logarithmic falloff. Set it to something pretty small. And max distance of 100. And I'm going to change the directivity a little bit on this one. You can hear how that sounds. Another feature in the 3D preview is to control click and drag, and you can simulate elevation. And for our bullet hits, we're going to use a new feature in FMOD 110. Uh, let me just import all of my assets first. So I'm going to do ceramic. These are all just going to be multi sounds. Cool. So now that I have all of my multi events set up for my bullet impacts, I'm going to select all of them, go to the master, and add a source. I'm going to make sure we're bypassing the distance attenuation curve, and then I'm going to set the min and max distance. Because even though we're bypassing the attenuation curve, it do, still takes into account the max distance on the GBR plugin. The reason why we're bypassing the distance attenuation is because we're going to create our own curve. These are great, but sometimes you just want something that's a little more customized. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. So in one of our events, on our track, I'm going to create a gain plugin. I'm going to add some automation and I'm going to add a curve. Uh, and you can see this, we can open up a preset parameter. We haven't made one yet. Uh, so just go down to new parameter. I'm going to attach this to the distance parameter and I'm going to call this distance and min max is 0 to 100. And what I'm going to do is Create a customized curve here. And then from right on top of the player, it's going to be uh, loud, and then it's going to fall off in a curved pattern down to about 20 dB at 50 meters, and then go down linearly from that to almost inaudible. And then we're going to right click on that plugin and say convert to preset. And you'll see we pop up with this preset arrow, and we will click on it. It'll link us to our uh, preset browser. And so I'm just going to rename it in here, call it fall off curve. We can see any change made in the browser is also reflected in the each instance of the preset. I'm going to go into my other bullet hits, and I can even drag and drop in, it into there or I can insert effect, plug in effect, or preset effect, and it's right there. And we are also gonna add a second effect. I'm gonna right click insert effect, a delay. I wanna put that before the gain. Uh, the bullet in our game is actually a raycast. There's no physical object. So we want to create the illusion that something is traveling from 
the gun to the impact. And we're going to use a delay based on distance to set that up. So in the delay, we have our wet level to max, feedback to nothing, and dry level to nothing. And in my distance parameter that I've already set up, I'm going to add a delay automation. And I, you can see that I can set this up in the window as well as in the deck. And I'm going to set it from at zero, it's going to be as small as I can go. And then at 100, it's going to be about one second. And we can preview that. And you can hear that the distance is affecting both the gain and the delay. So if we set it in our distance parameter, even over here in our preview, we can say we can go all the way out here at like 65 meters and fire our gun. And then the impact hits. And I'm going to right click on that delay, convert to preset. Uh, I can just go to my browser. and go to my effects and drag onto each one. So we have all our bullet hits with their delay and custom fall off curve. And they all have the GVR source on them. So last thing we're gonna do, build all banks. I hit F7 for that. And then we'll move over to Unity for the next video.